human level AI will not come from ChatGPT, nor will it come from any similar large language models or LLMs that you might've seen recently. This is a statement that I truly believe, and it's something that I've been deliberating about for months. I've actually wanted to talk about this topic for a long time on my channel, but as it turns out, coming up with a well thought out solid idea that is backed by logic and reasoning as opposed to emotions and hype, well, it takes quite a long time. Figuring out how to present that in a concise and convincing way takes even longer. However, that is the goal of this video, to give you one core argument for why ChatGPT and similar methods are a dead end, specifically on the path to human level artificial intelligence. And perhaps by the end of the video, we'll also be able to find a direction that may be able to change that. I promise I won't take too long to get to my argument, but first, there are a couple points I want to touch on. The first thing is actually pretty neat. I will be giving away a free GPU, an RTX 3080 Ti, along with some other cool videos, thanks to Nvidia and their free GTC conference that is coming up soon. So do stick around to the end if you want to hear more about that. But back to my argument. There are two points that first I need to make absolutely clear for this to all make sense. The first is exactly what I mean when I say human level AI, and I don't think my definition is too unreasonable. However, it also might not be what comes to the mind of a lot of people when they generally think of AGI. For one, I do not mean an agent that could do anything that any human could do, because well, that wouldn't quite be human level it would be far beyond on the level of what an entire population's intelligence could do. And I don't even mean a model that comes pre-equipped with tasks that any average human could do. The issue there is that such a definition is solely focused on tasks and says nothing about an agent's ability to learn. It would, for example, even preclude infants from the level of human level intelligence, even though that would be quite the contradiction because at least last time I checked, infants were still considered human. The rough definition I use is a system that given the same sensory inputs a human would have from infancy, along with the right goals, could end up learning the same things your average human could. My exact definition here is subject to change as I continue thinking over this, but the focus on the ability to learn here is absolutely essential because, well, that is what humans do. Every human has an infinite number of tasks that they have absolutely no clue how to do. But one essential part of being human is that we can learn and we can figure out how to do things that we were previously incapable of. And what's even more impressive is we can do that by teaching ourselves without any external supervision. And this is exactly what you want when you want an agent that can generalize and learn how to solve new tasks, including ones that it might not have pre-training data for. And with that covered, let's move on to the next point, which may surprise some of you. And it's that I think ChatGPT is absolutely awesome. I think that standalone, as it is now, it's super awesome. I think that there will also be lots of incredible startups that come from meet applications of LLMs. I think that there will be tremendous economic value created by LLMs. I think that we still have yet to see the full potential of LLMs, both in how strong they will become and in the numerous types of applications that we have yet to see surface. And I think that many of the lessons and techniques that we are learning from developing LLMs will be very useful when it comes to creating human level artificial intelligence. I simply do not think that more scaling up, more self-supervised learning and more reinforcement learning with human feedback will get us to human level AI. I would categorize those things as the core ideas underpinning most LLM work right now. I think that there's still at least one and maybe more key ideas that we're missing to get to human level AI. Me thinking that LLMs are awesome, but still lacking in some key areas that are essential to create human level AI are not mutually exclusive ideas. And this video is absolutely not about putting down a bunch of research that is very neat and useful in many ways. It's instead about discussing what I think is a core weakness of these approaches in the hopes that we can overcome them and make even more incredible strides in the future. And with that, we can get into my argument. So why do I think that current LLM work is a dead end on the path to human level intelligence? Well, it's because current methods do not have the ability to continuously improve themselves without excessive supervision. And if you go back to my definition of human level AI, a key requirement is just that, the ability to learn new things without external supervision. Now, technically, I did just tell you a bit of a lie because to an extent, large language models like GPT-3 can do this. They can improve themselves without external supervision, and that is exactly the point of self-supervised learning. Specifically in LLMs, by taking strings of text that appear from the internet and predicting the next word that will appear, you can learn the structure of human language and how to reproduce it. And that is really impressive. So why don't I think that's enough? Well, there's actually a couple reasons. Starting with the first, models trained with next token prediction are still quite limited. Sure, LLMs can do a lot, but if you depart too far from the distribution of their training data, for example, by talking about a highly specialized topic that is not widely written about on the internet, there is nothing an LLM can do to learn more about it. 
For one, their action spaces are limited to text, which means that they can't do something like search the web for more information. But even if that was possible, because there have been some projects like this recently that allow for external information retrieval, it still couldn't give information beyond what was in its training data. By design, it's limited to the text that appears on the internet and it has no way to overcome that. And perhaps if you're inquisitive or maybe you're a problem solver, your response may be something like, well, let's change that. Let's imbue our agent with the ability to act for itself and create new knowledge. And if that is what you were thinking, I think you are 100% on the right path. That's also the kind of direction that I've had on my mind. So let's think of some ways to potentially go about doing this. And what you'll see is that we still run into some issues. So idea number one, let's start with a language model, have it argue with itself, point out its own flaws, and then try to improve them. Or maybe we could even get a bit fancier with this and have a bunch of different language models and have some system where the language model is over here, will criticize the language models over there, and through multi-agent learning, they'll somehow be able to improve each other or something like that. This is an idea that I've actually had in the back of my mind for a little bit now, but luckily a group of researchers has taken up quite a similar project very recently. Anthropic AI, which is a company that releases some really great research, and this is not sponsored by them by the way, but if you're interested, go check them out. They have a recent paper on a similar idea where they have a language model criticize itself to make itself less harmful and more helpful. At a high level, the way it works is that their model will generate multiple responses to a given prompt, and then the language model is asked which of its responses is better given a set of principles. Then the model is trained to prefer the better responses in future outputs the same way ChatGPT is trained using human feedback and reinforcement learning. The main difference being that here, human feedback is not needed because, well, the AI is giving the feedback instead. It's a pretty neat idea. And as it turns out, it actually works quite well in this scenario. However, if we were to apply the same technique to instead have the agent try and generate new knowledge for itself, we would likely run into a big issue. If you want to think for yourself or why the reason to that might be, feel free to pause the video and ponder for a bit. Time's up. The issue is that the AI generated feedback from the language model has no grounding. That is to say that the model has no way to connect its knowledge on text to real world knowledge. For example, let's say we have a model that tries to improve its own skill at chess. It could go through various scenarios in games by giving out sequences of positions for moves. But when it's asked to explain what went wrong at a certain point, what if it gives a wrong answer? This could be for as simple of a reason as it doesn't know how a knight moves in chess. Pause, pause, pause. You have no clue how long it took me to draw this goddamn horse. If you want to see some more horsey in the future and heck, maybe even a little more AI content, consider subscribing to the channel. It actually does really mean a lot. Thank you so much. Back to the video. Or it could be because it doesn't have the ability to integrate the knowledge of what a board state looks like after several moves. And this is precisely the issue. Because while the model may even improve a little bit at first, eventually it will be incorrect. And then when it's trained on those wrong assumptions, it will further reinforce those issues leading to even more issues. And again, this is all because feedback provided by the language model is not grounded to any sort of truth. It has no grounded concept of something being factual or not, at least not in the sense of how it relates to knowledge in the real world. So it looks like our idea number one on how LLMs could create new knowledge ends in failure. But let's not give up too early and move on to idea number two. Here we can learn what we used just now to perhaps come up with a better solution. If the lack of grounding to some sort of truth is an issue, then let's do just that. Ground the feedback that we give to the agent. One way we could do this is by giving it human feedback, which would be grounded to the real world. And this is actually exactly how you end up with something like ChatGPT. You use human feedback along with reinforcement learning to steer the model in a desirable direction. And in theory, you could use this to get any kind of behavior you want. The issue though is that this approach is just not scalable. It works well enough to get some of the great results we can see in ChatGPT, but teaching entirely new concepts would take just far too much feedback. Perhaps we could keep this as a final step to some system, but we still want something between simple next token prediction and high level human feedback. And as far as my meager monkey brain can fathom, I just can't think of any way to do this within the realm of just language only models. Which brings us to our final idea number three, where we finally decide to provide our agent with a body, vision, and the ability to interact with the real world. Or perhaps if we don't want to start in such a complex environment, maybe the ability to run around in Minecraft or interact with a web browser. And from here, the agent's ability to interact with an external environment grounds its learning in that external environment. There's all sorts of interesting research and ideas on exploration, intrinsic motivation, skill acquisition, essentially ideas on how to learn useful skills or complete useful tasks without requiring excessive supervision. But by this point, we've long left the realm of language-only models. And this is precisely why I think that the current trajectory of work on LLMs will lead us to a dead end on the path to human-level AI. We can continue to scale up, 
make better architectures, and get more humans to give feedback, and to an extent, LLMs will continue to improve quite a bit. But at the end of the day, none of that changes the fact that most LLMs right now are not grounded. And even if we do ground them to human preferences, like in ChatGPT, their ability to scale is limited. Or at the very least, those have been my conclusions, but if you disagree, let me know why. I'm certainly not arrogant enough to think that my conclusions are absolute or to ignore any well thought out criticism. And while you're at it, let me tell you more about how you can win a free RTX 3080 Ti that Nvidia is giving to me to give away to you, which is a great GPU for training ML models, by the way. Or if you're interested, I will also be giving away five credits for Nvidia's Deep Learning Institute, where you can take courses to learn more about ideas like the fundamentals of deep learning or how to build a conversational AI application. And to enter, all you need to do is spend one minute filling out a quick form and attend Nvidia's free online GTC conference happening from March 20th to March 23rd. This year, it has a focus on topics like the metaverse and AI. And this year I'm going to be attending for some of the awesome AI content they're providing. For example, talks from some of the best in the field, like Demis Hassabas, who is the CEO of DeepMind, if you didn't know. Also, Sergey Levine, who has probably one of the most prolific RL labs at Berkeley and Ilya Sutskever, who is the chief scientist at OpenAI. These are just a fraction of some of the really cool talks and workshops you can sign up for, and I'll be linking some of my favorites in the description if you're also interested. And if you also wanna take part in the giveaway, I will additionally be linking that in the description where you can take a very quick survey just to get some essential info and it will help you sign up for GTC using my link. After attending at least one session, you can either tweet about your favorite moment from the panel or simply upload a screenshot of you attending just as proof that you actually attended the panel online. And that is all you need to do. But for now, that's all I have. So if you've liked this, consider subscribing to the channel, but otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I hope to catch you next time.